Ma Madam Speaker, forgive me for being too militant in drawing your attention. Right Honorable Speaker, dear colleagues. Meanwhile, we missed you. We wanted you to lay the wreath for DP, but it's good you've now come. <laughs> The, the DP is a very big party and has very many leaders. I thank you for allowing our whip to represent all of us. Right Honorable Speaker, in paying tribute to the late Honorable Colonel Charles Okelengola Majidwogo, let's not lose sight of his chosen calling, that of a soldier. A soldier stands between the enemy and the people he or she has sworn to protect. A soldier stays awake in order that the people may sleep. A soldier risks death in order that the people may live. To keep the peace, a soldier goes to war. Our fallen colleague was a true soldier in the true sense of the word. Come with me to the stretch between the Karuma Falls Bridge that gateway to northern Uganda. The LRI was very active in the areas between that area and the border of Sudan. Witness the long lines of vehicles of all types slowly driving north, armored vehicles at the head of the convoy and at the rear, some others in the middle protecting Columns of soldiers marched on foot on either side of the convoy. The professionals tell me that they were marching at a distance of at least 400 meters, which is said to be the effective range of a rifle, putting themselves between the rebels and the people. The LRA had put a ban on anyone lighting a fire. The penalty for lighting a fire was death. Our fallen colleague took it upon himself to effectively defy the cruel order of the rebels. He mounted several operations which pushed the rebels away from that area. He then announced that the ban on fire was over and the people were free to light fire again and stop eating raw food. The people gave him what in Luo is called Nying Pak, which means a praise name. Macho Dwogo, meaning fire has returned. To the family, we are not here to pity you. We are here to comfort you. Even as we comfort you, we know how difficult it is for our feeble words to comfort you. This is more so because the absence of your now departed loved one will be a constant reminder of the happiness you shared while he lived. Remember that we are not merely here to say sorry for your loss. We are here to say we share your loss. For Honorable Kelo Ngola had transcended the boundary of his family and his community. He belonged to the wider family we all call Uganda. He never once dishonored his uniform. Friends, it's not only private subity who dishonored his uniform. Anybody in uniform, whether police, prisons, UPDF, who acts outside the law, who unleashes excessive violence on an armed civilian, dishonors the UPDF uniform. You don't have to kill a Ugandan to dishonor the uniform. That was rather extreme. But let it be said that it is today that we must express our high expectations of our armed forces. In closing, Madam Speaker, I call for a national reflection on the hate-mongering that dominates public discourse, especially when a prominent public servant dies. There are those who have decided to specialize in lighting fires of discontent in the populace. It is up to us to distill the torrents of venomous outbursts and discern what lies underneath 
It's our responsibility to understand that for every effect, there is a cause. Responsibility means ability to respond. It is our collective duty as leaders to respond to the outrage being expressed whenever the reasonable expectations of the people are ignored. I call for humility, such as the Honorable Kelengola expressed. You have heard the praise his colleagues have given him. Some of us, even with little achievements, climb the tallest tree to extol our own achievements. I never once heard Honorable Kele Ngoma Engola praise himself, you, but you have heard for the first time how he fought in Congo, in Sudan, making our army proud. I call for civility. We need a new culture of civilized discourse, and it must be expressed above all here, the people's house. It is here where the sovereignty of the people is expressed. I listened to a tape, a recording of the late Brigadier Nobo Mayombo, who gave the UPDF its name in the CA. And he said the mission of the UPDF is the protection of the people, to defend the people. And he called it forces to allow for its expansion. I also call upon the UPDF and all the other sister forces to reflect upon their mission. Madam Speaker, our role is state building. State building is not a partisan task. It demands the joining of hands. It demands that we talk to each other and listen to each other. This country is hurting, Madam Speaker. We need to repent to those we have wronged and to forgive those who have wronged us. Only true reconciliation can secure our collective future. We are all in the same boat as Ugandans. You may think you have a plan B, but there is no country B. Madam Speaker, there is no safe house, there is no safe room in a burning house. Let's keep Uganda safe from any fire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you so much, Honorable Mao Aruboy. Honorable Cheru, sorry. Right Honorable Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker, and my friends. You, you know why I'm calling him Araboy, whereas Kano Okelo was busy with Amoka. Honorable Echeru was with the Araboys in Teso. Right Honorable Speaker, I am privileged to come here and say a few positive things about my very close friend, the late Okelengola, before we finally say bye-bye to him. But on the onset, I want to say, just to add on what Honorable Mawa said, to the country, death belongs to all of us. And that you can celebrate the death of a person, even if you don't agree with such a person, in, my, in our humble position in Teso is to invite a curse to your family and to your people. I am happy, Madam Speaker, that Machodogo, much as his life has been cut short by this color soldier, there are no more camps in Oyam. Madam Speaker, there are no more convoys in Kamudin, Tugulu. Madam Speaker, there are no more convoys in Karuma to Pakwach. Madam Speaker, the Langi, the Acholi, the, the, the people of Northern Uganda have now joined the rest of Uganda in fending for their lives as normal, peaceful citizens. And the role Okelo Machodogo played is very critical in making this happen. And just like uh, Mao, I think he had, Honorable Mao, he had read my mind, even after doing all those big things that have been clearly en 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 enumerated by his colleagues, he was very humble. A very humble. And you know, let me say this today for you, senior ministers. You are senior, 
We are ministers of state. I switch on the mic and repeat that you salute them. <laughs> senior ministers, we salute you because you are senior, because you are our seniors. Okello knew that he had done all he has done for this country, mm. but he knew he was a minister of state and he continued to respect those who are senior to him. And this must be a lesson to all of us. This must be a lesson to all of us. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Musa Chuero. The right, right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, let me also join colleagues to support the motion moved by the Prime Minister to pay glowing tribute to our brother, the retired Colonel Charles Engola Okello. Right Honorable Speaker, allow me also on my behalf, on behalf of my family, and on behalf of the people of Katakui District, and on behalf of government, to extend my sincere condolences and sympathies to the bereaved family of the late Okelo Engola. Right Honorable Speaker, I knew the Honorable Okelo Engola between 2011-2016 when I traveled to Lango sub-region to do some work with the Minister of Northern Uganda then, the Honorable Rebecca Amuge Otengo, who is now the Ambassador of Uganda to Ethiopia. And Right Honorable Speaker, I can state brief briefly that the right honorable, uh, the honorable Okelo Engola, as a politician, strived to accomplish the set targets and task, tasks within the specified frame time when he was in office as a politician. I realized that when I visited his district and we worked from nine o'clock in the morning up to 11 o'clock in the night. And he was very resilient and wanted to continue with the program. But we requested him that we can continue the next day. So in so doing, right Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Okelo Engola served his country diligently in, dedicated, in a dedicated manner. Secondly, Right Honorable Speaker, as a trained soldier or officer of the UPDF, he defended the interests of his country and in so doing, he demonstrated the true professionalism of UPDF, earning him the name Macho Dogo, which I also learned about between 2011 and 16 when I visited Lango to do some piece of work. And as a member of parliament, you may also bear witness with me, especially as an NRM member of parliament, he was always conscious of his responsibility to serve the people of his constituency and indeed the whole of Uganda, keeping in mind that the implementation of the NRM manifesto is on track. And that's what made him a very great NRM mobilizer. And finally, right honorable speaker, as a member of cabinet, he was always on time. And during cabinet meetings, he would always speak frankly, though briefly, but the messages which he would pass during the discussion would add value to the subject matter under the discussion. And he had zeal in the fight against corruption. Right Honorable Speaker, may the soul of the departed, retired Colonel Okelo Engola rest in eternal peace and may the Lord sustain the bereaved. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Vice President. 
Honorable Mao. Honorable Mao.